This is an example of one of the training videos in our FileMaker certification preparation course at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. This lesson is all about context and actually covers two questions in the study guide. We've made it down to the editing layout section. This gives a little overview here. You can choose the views and then you can choose the default table and this is probably the most important part of the layout setup because of its impact on everything else on the layout you can choose the theme and the width and other things as well this talks about the views and we're going to talk about table view a little bit more later and then we have the changing the table that the layout shows and how we can do that so in the study guide, there's actually a question that talks about the context is king. So we'll pull that up here. And it says the phrase context is king is at the core of FileMaker. How does this idea affect FileMaker actions such as scripting, data entry, and layout creation? We've already talked about context a little bit in our defining database schema where we went through all of these relationships and how just changing one little thing here of the table occurrence will change how all of this views as we go from band manager or performance. But context is not just the table occurrence that's underlying. It's also the found count that's here, as well as the current record that you are on as this changes here, that changes the context because we're on the table, but it's in this found set and it's this particular record. Everything else on this layout is based on this piece of information. So their answer that they have for question one is in FileMaker. Context refers to the underlying table occurrence of a layout, the current found set, and the current record. Almost every action of FileMaker operates from the current context. So if the context is incorrect, you're likely to get unexpected results. For example, consider a script intended to delete a student record. The delete record request script step will delete, will simply delete the currently active record. So if the script were to run while the current context was a teacher or class record, a record in the wrong table would be deleted. You can change or check the current context using a variety of script steps, including go to layout and go to related record. So all of those play a factor in context. And then we have another question regarding context that we'll just talk about right away. The custom apps has three tables, companies, employees, and contact methods shown in the diagram here. The employee John Smith has three records in the contact methods table for cell phone, work email, and personal email entered in that order in the contact info field. If a portal to employees is placed on the current company's layout and the field contact methods contact info is placed in the portal, what would you see in that field for John Smith? How would you change the portal on the company's layout to be able to view all contact methods records for each employee. So I have created a layout for that for this particular one. And we have a company's employees and contact methods, just like we have here. If we look at the managed database, we look at the relationships, I made them exactly the same with the same related fields and even tried to name them the same way. So we have that context and they are saying we want the layout based on companies and there's the table of companies if we wanted to change that we would do that here change uh, show records from companies we have a portal employees which is here and the field contact methods contact info is placed in the portal so we have this portal with the names of the employees here and let's just option drag here and we will choose contact methods and contact info and we'll create the label too even though it'll be a different font here just so we can see what it will do 
And what will we see? We see cell phone. Now we do have an employee record. That's the only one at the moment. If we go to contact methods, we have three records, one, two, three. And these are actually all based on uh, for John. So if we just come in and actually put a portal here and we go to contact methods, and we choose the contact info field. So I have contact methods, contact info field. From this context, he has three records. But if we go to company, John Smith is only showing cell phone from here. And this is exactly like what we saw in our other layout where we were looking at the relationships, looking at one to many and we can see here's the different arrows with their crow's feet and how those are going to play out so if we go back to our layout here for company we've answered the question what would you see in that field for john smith now how would we change the portal on the company's layout to be able to view all contact method records for each employee so that we would want to change this context to show records from contact methods. Now, what is that gonna show for first name and last name here if this is based on contact methods, which this field is still based on contact methods. This field's still based on employees. So what would you expect to see? We have these three records with John's name for all of them. So let's look at their answer for this particular scenario. You would only see the first related contact method for each related contact. For John Smith, it would show only cell phone, which it did. To view all contact information, the portal's contacts would need to be changed to contact methods. This action would result in all three of John Smith's contact methods being visible in the portal and all contact methods for all other company employees. So if we added another employee here and we added a contact method, which in this relationship, we did not choose allow creation of records and we just add a couple of contact methods. Now, when we go to company, we don't see the employee because if we look, and we're just gonna copy this ID here for a moment. If we go back to employees, there was no ID here for company. And in the relationship, we had to have that in order for companies to see the employee. So if we put in this company here, and then we go back to company. Notice we still have John Smith's name for these. And that should not be a surprise if you recall everything that we did in this particular section here, because it is going to show the first record of related because of the way it was going through the relationship. We were basing it here then we switched it to be based here but it when it goes back to over here it's going to be based on the first record so if that doesn't make sense you may want to review example three in this particular section but we have gotten our answer and then some for this section since we are talking about context just to verify that this is the case how would we need to change this in order to get the real name here and that would be we would need to duplicate this employees to record here and then create the relationship just like this one but it's going to this table occurrence instead and I'm just going to leave that employees to now when we go into our edit layout if we change this to be employees to and I'm going to leave this as employees just so you can see the change here. So we'll save that. And now we have the correct first name, but this last name is still going back to the employees table occurrence. So we're starting at companies. This portal is based on contact methods. So we're going here and then this field is going over here, but this field is jumping backwards over to here. Context, context, context.
that gives us the answer to question one and two. In the next section, we'll continue on building layouts. I hope you enjoyed this sample from our FileMaker certification preparation course. Visit ProductiveComputingUniversity.com for more information about the certification preparation course and other training to help you save time as a FileMaker developer.